Hello. Hello, Dr. Jonathan Fine. This is Shantanu again from Canada. How are you? Yes, sir. I'm fine, thank you. Um, I'm going, uh, I first came to India in 1961. That's 50 years ago. And I was a medical student at the time at Yale University. And I spent two months in a village, um, the village of Gandhi Gram in the Madurai district. And now after 50 years, if my health allows me, I'll go back there uh, a week after next for to see it after 50 years, how, how, how it looks now. Yeah, I haven't been back there in 50 years, so I want to make a kind of pilgrimage back before I leave India this time. No, so uh, <clears throat> whatever you'd like to ask me, I'd be glad to try to respond. I would like to ask you, <coughs> first of all, uh, it's it, it's quite clear to the uh, to the listeners that you have been uh, working with the uh, on one side with the poor people in India for a pretty long time, and on the other side, you have been uh, perhaps impressed by uh, some other like-minded people who have dedicated their lives for uh, for the poor, also for a pretty long time. These two are uh, correct, uh, right? Yeah, if I understand you right, <clears throat> what Vinay uh, <clears throat> Sen has done with his life and what uh, others in the medical profession who I see uh, who dedicated themselves to rural welfare of the Adivasis and other minorities. These people are the spiritual food uh, which nourishes me. Yeah. So how long have you known uh, Dr. Binayak Sen? I first met uh, him in um, uh, January 2010 at the Medical Friends Circle in um, uh, which met that year in Warda. Uh, he arrived um, at that meeting as, uh, when I first met him. He seemed to me to be a broken man. Uh, it was almost like he suffered from post-traumatic stress after two years in prison while uh, awaiting trial. I, I, I interviewed him at the time, and he was uh, justifiably... Uh, overwhelmingly obsessed with uh, hunger, which he characterized as the genocide of hunger in India. Um, I next met him in uh, August of last year, when at seven in the morning, uh, he um, knocked on my door. I had no idea he was uh, here in Belasper. And uh, he visited with me for an hour and uh, left me a warm greeting and a paper he, he had presented to the South Asian journalists, I think it was in Sri Lanka, early in the year, a beautiful piece of writing. Uh, so I had that memorable visit with him in August, and then uh, I decided uh, I could not stay away from uh, when I found out that he was going to be sentenced. I'm sorry, I... Uh, he was going to be, uh, his, his uh, uh, verdict would be announced on 24th December, so I traveled to Raipur uh, to be with him, and as soon as he saw me, he turned and gave me a big bear hug. Um, uh, so it was mutual, I can assure you. And that was the first occasion at which I met his wife and daughter and some other supporters from across India. Although I was the only foreigner present, I stuck out like a sore thumb, and the media had some interest in photographing me, although they obviously weren't sure who I was. Um, and um, I just was proud to be there in solidarity with him, uh, although like the family and people all across the world, I was absolutely mind-boggling shocked at the both the verdict and worse the sentence. Uh, that's how much regard uh, uh, the court and I, I think the government of Chhattisgarh has in a noble man who's dedicated himself to the Adivasis of India. Uh, that's how much regard they have for those kinds of good works. Smearing him 
with uh, falsehoods, uh, charging him with sedition, and uh, imprisoning him for life. So uh, I was just happy to be there with him and his family before the verdict and the sentencing were pronounced. I feel very close to him uh, uh, because there's nobody... Uh, he would deny this, but there's... No, I, I, of course, have a background in international human rights work. I don't know if you realize that. And for years I've worked in the field and have I founded a group called Physicians for Human Rights in the United States and co-founded the International Federation of Health and Human Rights Professionals, which is based in the Netherlands. But I've never known a physician uh, who has moved me more deeply because his steadfast commitment uh, to the tribal people of India and others, uh, despite the huge risks that he took. And now he's reaped the win with the life sentence, which all of us, of course, hope will be overturned promptly. Uh, but in the first instance, it's a question of the, uh, the bail hearing, once again postponed until the 9th of uh, February. Uh, tell me, uh, Dr. Fine, I have not been there, uh, but I can clearly see that... Uh, 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 among the people who have uh, walked with the poor, with the Adivasis, and with the background that you say you have, India is, uh, many of us think that India is in a peculiar uh, situation whereby she should have, given her historical background, she should have been one of the forefront of champions for uh, for for the Adivasis and and for their cause and for their uh, uh, their plight and uh, to have a more inclusive society which takes care of them, but something has is happening in India, uh, which is under the radar of uh, of 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 the uh, of the main newspapers who are, who are so preoccupied with growth rate and GDP and and and, and all this. And there's some there's some sort of an uncaring, some sort of a, a side of India which is which pains us. What, what do you feel about it? Do you observe something like this? Well, absolutely. I think India, uh, our excellence, is an example of a country that uh, is full of contradictions, um, and uh, that has been true for many years since independence. And in many ways, it's intensified uh, at the current moment. Uh, there is lip service. Uh, there are constitutional guarantees, lip service by politicians to the Adivasis. The fact of the matter, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, that the Adivasis continue to be grossly uh, neglected in the delivery of the fundamentals uh, that should be provided in a free society. They have no voice. They have inordinately high maternal and child mortality. Uh, they have virtually uh, uh, no health services in many parts of, uh, of uh, this state and the other states of uh, central India. Um, uh, they are treated like non uh, like non entities. They are ignored in large part. And uh, uh, JSS, uh, uh, supremely true of uh, Benayat Sin, but relatively few others have come to these regions uh, to provide uh, support for them and advocacy for them. Uh, the government certainly has not met its obligations in a meaningful way. Um, there obviously are exceptions here and there, but overwhelmingly they're not provided with education they're semi-starved. Uh, and I've said himself calls it the genocide of hunger, which stalks not only the Adivasis, but uh, uh, actually uh, 325 million of the 700 million that live in, still live in the villages of India. And the Adivasis have terrible indices of health. Uh, they don't get enough nourishment. Uh, and... Uh, all I can say is the government of India may talk a good game, but it fails miserably in treating them with dignity and respect. 
Yeah, I, and the essentials I, of life. Absolutely. So I remember your uh, comment uh, a, a little while ago, uh, earlier, uh, earlier when I called you, and that is the apparent silence of the Indian leadership. And I mean political so leadership. So that's to me, yeah, that's to me the most shocking part of this whole thing. It's one thing for a politically uh, in, uh, influenced court, lower court at that, in Chhattisgarh, uh, to commit such a wrong. But India takes pride in being a democracy, and if so, why isn't the leadership of the country speaking out forcefully and condemning the action that was taken in this lower court in Chhattisgarh? What are they afraid of? Or are they agreed, uh, do they agree with that court that he's guilty of the most heinous crimes? The failure, despite the, the, much of the leading press of India uh, condemning the action of the court, the failure of the national leadership to speak out, be it the prime minister, be it Sonia Gandhi, be it most of the leadership, or all of it virtually, of the BJP, uh, the failure of uh, the leaders of all the political parties uh, to, to speak out on this is absolutely roundly to be, it's astonishingly uh, 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 disheartening. Uh, and to me, that's the most shocking part of this whole thing. Where are the champions of Indian democracy at a moment like this? Hmm. No, I, 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 I intend to, to hammer away at that theme. I think these people uh, who have political power should be ashamed of themselves that they're not exercising it at a crucial time like this. In defense of one of the most noble uh, uh, positions and humanitarians in the, in the whole of the country. Yeah. And frankly, I don't, uh, it, it, it is so contemptible that uh, I, I find it hard to believe that to, to, and now it is well over a month since that infamous day uh, in Raipur when this sentence was brought down that there's been hardly a peep from, uh, from anybody. The one notable exception, there are others, but the one most notable was the leading criminal lawyer uh, from the BJP, who came uh, in uh, ten days or so ago to the High Court in Belasper and gave an eloquent uh, legal defense uh, in favor of his immediate release from prison. Oh, uh, there are, yeah, there are a few, but a very few. Uh, uh, he's a former, as I recall, a former Minister of Justice as well. There are very few leaders in India. The overwhelming majority of them are hiding, hiding for reasons best known to themselves. Hmm. It, it, it's, it, it's a black mark uh, on Indian democracy. Hmm. Hmm. And I must say that uh, I, I would like to hear more from the leaders of the so-called free world on this very point. And I haven't researched it, so I have to be cautious of saying they too have not spoken out. I know there's a great deal of world press. There's a huge mobilization of ordinary Indians in this country and abroad, and others in defense of the Nayak Sin. But I make this comment particularly because I think leaders of every country uh, that uh, that uh, believes democracy uh, uh, as as the Holy Grail. The leaders of every country should be speaking out. Uh, frankly, my opinion is that a fair system of justice is more important than even elections as a, as a uh, measuring stick of the quality of democracy. And in this respect, India to date has failed miserably. He was incarcerated for two years until the Supreme Court took up his case and provided bail last time. And he languishes in prison today, uh, and every day he's there is a betrayal of uh, a fair system of justice in India, which to me is the most important hallmark of uh, a democratic state.